It's never been a better day to be an Xbox fanboy. <laughs> Xbox is back and they just won E3. I'm telling you, Xbox is back and they just won E3. Now, yeah, I know Nintendo hasn't gone yet. In fact, as of filming this, Square Enix hasn't even gone yet, but come on. Nintendo would have to pull out an equal amount of tomfoolery and I just don't think they have it in them to do it in 40 minutes. I don't even know where to begin. This was 90 minutes of pure adrenaline pumping, non-stop releases, announcements, dates, gameplay, Xbox Game Pass, Xbox Game Pass, and a little bit more Xbox Game Pass. I mean, we saw Halo, which by the way is coming end of the year. And this wasn't like the Halo we saw last time, thankfully. This wasn't Halo I'd actually want to play. The multiplayer is going to be free at launch. And in 120 FPS, if you care about that kind of thing, and unfortunately I do. And we even saw a little bit more of the story, and I just am so excited because there's finally a reason to own an Xbox. <laughs> that was, and I'm not kidding, and I'm not overplaying this at all. That was one of the best live events I've ever seen period. There was little to no talking. Other than near the end, we did get quite a bit of talking about Forza, but honestly, we got smashed with over an hour of announcements. By the time we got to Forza, my chat and I actually needed a breather. We were thankful to have someone just slow down and talk about one game for a minute. You're telling me people aren't going to go out now and buy one with a new Halo, that Halo coming by holiday season, and Starfield being an Xbox exclusive. Every game we've seen today is is free on Game Pass. Evil you just gotta buy an survived. Xbox and you can play all everything we've seen for free. Dark we haven't even got to Hellblade. I'm way too into this. Let me put this box back. <laughs> Look, a lot of my more passionate viewers will know that I've always loved Xbox. I've made videos about Game Pass and my favorite Xbox games in the past. And I've been following Microsoft and Xbox for the last few years and it just, I keep, I've been saying this a lot. I said it at the end of my last video. They're building up to something. They've bought so many game studios over the last few years. They're up to like 25 now and we've seen nothing from any of them until now. And Bethesda, this was Xbox and Bethesda's event because Xbox now owns Bethesda, and we got announcements like Starfield being exclusive for the console next year in November. Okay, I'm gonna go through this whole thing. I'm really, really, really amped up. No sponsor for this video, so let me sponsor myself with my own podcast, which is actually not a podcast. We're live tonight at 7 p.m. I'd love it if you could join. We're gonna be talking tonight about a fun thing and a scary thing. <laughs> E3, we're gonna be talking about all of that, as well as my seizure, which I had in the middle of CVS earlier in the week. So yeah, if you could go check out the Wood and Eric channel, maybe give it a sub, I'd really appreciate it. Oh, and this wasn't planned, but because there is no sponsor, I never get to mention this in my YouTube videos. GFuel! It's my Twitch sponsor, but it still helps support me. Through the whole E3 weekend, GFuel said they'd give me 30% off with my code beat-em-up, so I'd really appreciate it. If you're enjoying the streams, it supports those, but if you just enjoy me, or you just enjoy zero sugar caffeine filled deliciousness, go check out G Fuel, code beat em ups. It really does help support everything I do. Okay, now we'll get started. So kicking off with Starfield, we got some cinematics, I think in game visuals, and it looks gorgeous, but it's hard to go on any of this. I'm just excited. Next, a console launch exclusive, Stalker 2. I don't know what Stalker is. Honestly, never even knew about the first one, but this one looks really good. <laughs> they made a point of mentioning the ray tracing, and yeah, I mean, the entire game looks gorgeous. I also feel the need to add, so that I'm not repeating myself after every single one of these announcements, they showed 30 games today, and 27 of them are available via Game Pass Day 1. Xbox just out here bragging at this point. The next new announcement was a game called Contraband, and it was a cinematic trailer. It's one of their new studios and a game they're working on and you typically see cinematic trailers first before you see gameplay, but yeah. But it's just nice to see new IP after new IP after new IP being announced. Even if we don't see gameplay immediately right now today because it at least tells us as consumers and fans that have bought an Xbox, hey, we have games coming. Here are all of these big new IPs. See if these, don't worry. Like, 
It's starting off warm, but it's building up really quickly. Sea of Thieves, which a game I really loved. People made fun of me when the game released and I was addicted to it and they didn't understand why, but it's built a huge following since then with millions of players between PC and Xbox. I was watching this trailer and already getting that vibe and I called it a second before it happened. You must start by saving the life of one. Captain Jack Sparrow. <whistles> Yes! I knew as soon as I saw the oh. pirate treasure. That is so Didn't cool. Didn't realize we had company. Ah, oh my God. Captain Jack Sparrow. Is that actually I him? I suspect you already knew that. It sounds like him. That is a great voice actor if it's not him. It's a full original story based around Pirates of the Caribbean. And I love it. I'm actually really excited to play Sea of Thieves again. Uh, okay, while Battlefield or Battlefront or Battlefield, it's Battlefield, isn't exactly for me. I'm not huge into big online combat shooters. Even I can't help but be impressed by the scale of what this new Battlefield 2042 has to offer. I mean, even just that storm blowing the helicopters around and throwing it into buildings while everyone else is on the ground fighting. I don't know, it did look pretty cool. I don't know if I'll play it. 12 minutes. I've been looking forward to this game. You know that I like my weird and wacky indie games with interesting premises and setup. And this one is a top-down game with a cool art style that's based on time loops. It's always looked really intriguing, but I only found out during watching this trailer that it's got James McAvoy and Daisy Ridley as the main couple, and then William Defoe is in there as well, maybe as the bad guy? What a star-studded cast for this little indie game releasing exclusively on Xbox. Then we got a new look at the new Psychonauts 2. Okay, all right. Again, you have to kind of care about frame rates here, but Doom Eternal is getting 120 FPS update for the Xbox, which is insane. Or if you prefer, you can do 60 FPS with ray tracing. And Doom is a game that honestly is just crazy to play in 120. I was really hoping for a new Fallout game. Oh God. I loved Fallout 4 and wasn't super keen on Fallout 76. In fact, I hated it. It was horrible at launch. It was trash at launch. But for you Fallout 76 community, the three of you watching at home. It has gotten a ton better, just like Sea of Thieves. I dived back in a few months ago just to see where the game was at. And they've added so much. It feels like a fully fleshed out game now. There's tons of DLC and free content added in. And here is more. They're adding more into that game. So I hope it has a healthy ecosystem of people still playing it. I've missed the boat on that one and I'm just waiting for a Fallout 5. They even faked me out here because once they were done talking about 76, it looked like they were showing something new fallout don't 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 throw fallout 5 on the screen i'll lose my mind is it actually a new fallout welcome to pittsburgh what does that mean i hate you fell right into their trap if you enjoyed Gang Beasts, this is that, but with furry, adorable, cute little animals that you can wail on and throw into furnaces brutally. Hades is getting a physical release on Xbox. Then they dive straight into this game, which creeped me out, took my breath away, looks gorgeous. I hope the dog survives. If anything bad happens to the dog, I'm deleting the game immediately. Then, not even halfway through the event, they drop Halo on us. I was expecting it to be at the very end. They put it before even the middle. I can't even remember everything they dropped on us or the, everything that went into this, but I talked about it at the start. The multiplayer will be free at launch. You buy the game and you want to actually play the story mode, you can, or you can just get it on Game Pass anyway. So, I mean, it's still free no matter what way you slice it. Halo Infinite multiplayer will be free to play Whoa. and invite more of you than ever before That's weird. to become a Spartan hero. To become I'm excited to be Spartan here with hero. Joseph State. And people sometimes get weird when I say for free when I talk about Game Pass, because I know you got to pay, but they've bundled it now with Xbox Live, $10 for a month. I mean, you can play Halo at launch for 10 bucks and then cancel after that month. I mean, that's pretty close to free. Why you would ever cancel Game Pass at this point though, I don't know. I play so many free games that way. No 120 FPS for the multiplayer? Oh baby. Oh my God, I can't wait. I can't wait to play Halo again. I'm now realizing how long it's been since I've enjoyed Halo. He just waves. 
Grapple whip to gun. Grapple whip to what? What? I can't wait. Oh, this next one was actually huge for me. This was literally my one of my one of my favorite announcements because a plague tale was incredible. It was like a hidden gem. It was a surprise. I I, I played it on a whim. And I discovered this amazing gaming experience visually, gameplay-wise. But it felt like such a true hidden gem that I didn't know if it was going to get a sequel. And I really couldn't be more excited for anything else in this event as much as I am for A Plague Tale 2. I'm not kidding. I'm really not kidding. I don't know why I have to justify it. I feel like only a few people have played it. But if you have played it... You get me. You understand what I'm saying. If it's Plague Tale 2, but I'll lose my, my mind. Because a Plague Tale was... So it's Plague Tale 2. What the sh... Oh my god! What is this? What is this event, man? I knew they were going to do a sequel. I knew they were going to do a sequel. But day one on Xbox Game Pass. Xbox, this is the event I've been waiting for for like freaking years. Slime Rancher 2! <laughs> I never played the first Slime Rancher, but I was watching this like, what is this adorable mess? You like suck in little cute things and spit them out in the containers, which doesn't seem very ethical. But then you can feed them and they seem happy about it. And then it says Slime Rancher 2 and my chat got really hype and I was like, oh, I never played the first one. But this looks great. <laughs> Speaking of wacky, weird and another new IP, this one, which I can't remember the name of right now. Uh, no clue what was going on in that at all. It looked like the game genre changed a few times. The visuals were all over the place. It looks really trippy. Atomic Heart. Yeah, I mean, just another new IP getting announced. One of the many that are on the way. Oh, this next one. What a vibe. The music was there. The visuals were there. I, I'm still, even now, when I was watching it live, blown away. And even right now, this is... This looks insane. And then the animations on the combat too are so sick. And look at that. That is gorgeous. That is such a vibe. Holy crap, that looks amazing. Oh my God. What? Everything about this event has given me tingles. I was screaming during this event, by the way. Like people were telling me to calm down because I was peeking the mic. Oh, FPS. baby! Or maybe. Grounded had another really funny trailer. It is a really fun game. You play as little kids trapped in a garden and there's giant terrifying spiders and bugs and other creatures. And you need to scavenge, craft, build, survive. This is what I was talking about with updates to other games that actually make me want to dive in. The amount of Among Us DLC and add-on stuff I've seen over the last few days and I've not cared about. This was the first time I was like, oh, okay. You can have 15 people in a lobby now. It really has nothing to do with Xbox though, but you know. I think my chat said this next one has something to do with Kickstarter. I've never heard of this game before. It looks like the same HD 2D style that Square invented for Octopath Traveler, but in a new RPG that honestly looks better than, than Octopath Traveler. Just visually alone, I think it looks better. But then when they go into these turn-based combat segments and everything flips around, the camera moves, and there's just crazy special attacks and animations and lighting and effects, it honestly looks next level, like an evolution of this style of gameplay. Outer Worlds 2 was announced and had to have had the most honest trailer reveal of all time. Essentially, they only had a title card ready. I'm guessing this has just gone into development. They're announcing they're making a second one. Not that there is a second one, but they still made a full cinematic trailer and the voiceover for it mocked the fact that none of that was actually going to be in the game and they had just whipped it together essentially to have something, <laughs> which is nice. It's honest. It's refreshing. I wish Cyberpunk would have done that with the trailer they whipped together for the game. Then we... My god, I'm out of breath. Forza! Now I know what you're thinking. Cars. Ooh. I don't know why I think you're thinking that, but if you're anything like me, and I think a lot of you are, cars. Ugh. <laughs> that said, the last Forza I played, uh, 4, I think, Horizon, was actually really fun. I didn't realize they've become these giant open world games set in a country, and you can just drive around the open world game with a ton of other players and friends and drivers in the game. They spent a lot of time on that because it comes out pretty soon. So it makes sense they'd want to break it down a little bit. And as I said earlier, yeah, we were just relieved. My, my chat and I were just took a breather here to reflect on everything that we'd seen so far and take count of what we want to buy, or I guess not buy, because every single game 
is on Game Pass. Now here is my only gripe with the entire event, and it's just game positioning. They ended with a new IP, which I can't be mad about, because how many new IPs have we gotten in here? Three, four, five? That said, there's a little bit of steam taken away when you don't know what you're going into for the one last thing, because you still kind of hope to see Fable or something, right? And this one new thing looked really... I mean, it was cinematic. So you don't really get the full scope of what the game's gonna be. You just kind of want to see the game. If you're gonna end on the one more thing of a new IP, show the game. That's my only thing. But if they had taken this announcement, thrown it where Halo was, and put Halo at the end, then the whole time we would have been like, Halo, can't wait for Halo, get Halo, ends, perfect event. But other than that, it was a fantastic event, filled, again, with new IPs, upgrades to previous games, whether it's spec-wise with the 120 FPS or all the extra add-on content that's coming to the games, release dates and announcements for games that are coming, including Xbox exclusives like Starfield, a huge release, games coming this year like Halo Infinite and Forza. By the way, mostly everything was 2022, so next year is going to be a absolute banger from Xbox. I've been talking about it for what feels like years, but we just witnessed it. Xbox coming back in style, and from here, they are back. So if there was ever a time to get back into Xbox and to buy an Xbox to put alongside your PlayStation and your Switch, it's now. Nintendo is still to go, and they could, they could equal it. They could blow it out of the water if they really wanted to. I'm gonna be streaming Nintendos right here on YouTube, so subscribe and follow. I can't wait to go live on the 15th with all of you. I hope I see you all for my podcast tonight. Thank you for watching this video. I am so excited. I, I love E3, man. I love video games. Bye.